Come on. Give yourselves a hand. Come on. Feels good to do good, yes? Yeah, today we're continuing our series that we're calling Be the Reason. Everybody say, Be the Reason. Uh, Be the Reason that Someone Smiles Today. We're talking about how the Holy Spirit can work through us in little ways and big ways to make a difference. And uh, so if you want to, you can turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 5. But before I begin, I want to tell you about Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Brandon and Melanie mentioned that we, every year we do a 60-minute experience on that Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Just to be thankful to God. Not just with each other. We do that on Thursday, you know. But to be thankful to God since it's all, all good things flow from him. And every year I try to invite somebody to inspire uh, me and my friends. And I don't know if, if you read in the paper or saw in the news a few weeks ago on the east side in the Salishan area, a man murdered a family, a pastor's family, oh, the pastor's wife, I think his son, and two other family members. And I went... Uh, a week later to a, a, a peace walk, peace vigil over in the Salishan area and the city manager was there and the mayor and a bunch of other people and we were going to walk the community and pray for peace on the east side. And the man, the pastor whose family was murdered was there and he got up and started ta- preaching to these people how his uh, family is in heaven and you got to be in heaven and people were crying it was awesome and what what you didn't know is that that one of one of you gave a a meal yesterday to his family because they've been struggling financially it's a small church and and I invited him to come on Wednesday night and he's, he and I are going to have an interview because this guy has gone through the flames of hell and he doesn't smell like smoke. You know what I mean? And he's going to encourage you and bless you and you're going to be grateful and you're going to see he's grateful despite all you went through. So come. And then we're going to surprise him with a little gift for his family to help pay for funeral expenses. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. That's part of that green light fund. So Come. Come on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. It'll be a great hour. Better than anything going on TV, that's for sure. Well, I want to read you this story. Uh, So it's an unusual story in the Bible. A lot of people never preach from it because it's so awkward. It's an awkward story. And when they do, they usually make it about money and they use it as as a club to beat people over the head. But I'm going to teach you today that I think this story is, isn't really about money. It's about freedom. Everybody say freedom. freedom. Come on. So you can't say a word like freedom like freedom. <laughs> freedom. Freedom! Freedom! Yeah. That kind of freedom. It's about a man who had the freedom and two people who didn't. And when we say be the reason someone smiles today. This is a difficult time to smile, isn't it? There's a lot going on. A lot financially in people's lives and politically and all this. It's just bad news everywhere. So you turn off the TV and you cancel your newspaper subscription, but then you put on a Facebook and you watch your best friends fight with each other. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I was laughing with my buddy Justin because his son, Cruz, it was school pictures, and they told him to smile. And check, check this out. This, is, this was his school picture, how it turned out. <laughs> you know? And, and to me, like, if there was a picture that describes the vibe of America in 2020, th- this is, like, be the reason someone smiles today. <laughs> but not that kind of smile. Not the I'm going to bite you smile. Isn't that awesome? Give Cruz a hand. He's a good little guy. <laughs> ah, when I saw that, I thought, I, I, 
I know people that are like that. <laughs> Let me read you this story. Last week, if you were here, I hope you were here. If you didn't, you should watch. It's a good talk. I listened to it again myself, even though I preached it four times. Uh, we talked about Barnabas. And the chapter four ends this way. It says there were no needy. This is after the, the book of Acts, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. People are speaking in tongues and miracles start to happen. The, the disciples are totally transformed. But some of the people that are following them aren't transformed. They haven't been, they've been forgiven, but they're not free. Do you know the difference? What Jesus did on the cross, when you accept Jesus, you are forgiven. That's your heart. But your head's got to get free. And shame and guilt can hold you prisoner even though the cell door is open. You're still in the cage. So these people were free. And so free that they had money but money didn't have them. And so there was a guy named, they were sharing everything because they had the resources. It's not, some people were struggling, obviously, because they needed to share. There's no need to share if everybody's doing good, right? And it says they'd bring the money to the apostles, give those in need. This is what the free, people who felt free could do. And they gave an example. This it's exceptional by definition. That's why they're talking about it. This guy named Barnabas, son of encouragement from the tribe of Levi, came from Cyprus. He sells a field that he had owned and he brought the money, all the money, 100%. Say 100. 100%. He was 100 in. 100%. Now, was that about money? Not really. They were using money as an example of how free he was. That when he, he saw what the Holy Spirit was doing, he was excited about what the Holy Spirit was doing. So he had this money and he saw this need and he said, oh, you know what? It's okay. I'll just give the whole thing. That's what God was doing in Barnabas. Not everybody in Barnabas. He, he was free. Okay. So now that ends and chapter 5 begins and it tells a story of contrast. Contrast. But just like Barnabas wasn't about money, it was about freedom. This story of contrast isn't really about money. Money's just the lever the devil is using in this story. But the devil can find another level, lever in your life. Okay? There was a certain man named Ananias who with his wife, Sapphira, sold some property. And he brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. It doesn't say what percentage it was. Now, Barnabas did 100%. What if... Ananias and Sapphira only gave 90%. Would, would, would 90 be pretty good? Help me. Yes. Shoot. If you gave 90%, I'd put a statue out there in the, in the foyer of you. <laughs> what about 75? Yeah, be, I mean, amazing. You know, how about 50? If you sold your house and gave 50% of the proceeds to this church you'd be a deacon if we had deacons you would be a deacon <laughs> what about 25 pretty awesome what about 10 percent what if you just tithed it be great the percentage was not the problem the deception was it's not about the money this is not a story about money. This is a story about lying to yourself and lying to God. It says they claimed it was a hundred. Because they, why? Because they wanted to be Barnabas. Or they wanted you to think they were Barnabas. 
right? So he, he claimed it was a full amount with his wife's consent. This is kind of a duh, because he's married, doesn't have any other choice. That's, that's a little shot at marriage right there. Just, mm. <laughs> I can say that because my wife is not here today. Otherwise, I would not be allowed to make that emphasis. But he kept the rest. And then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? Sees this as a demonic thing. Because being a captive, not being free, when Jesus paid the price for you to be free, is, a, is, a, is a, the work of the enemy. That's demonic. You're free. And I have news for you. This is Dean's estimation now. But the reason people can speak in tongues and pray for the sick and be headed to heaven and people still don't want what we've got is they may believe we're forgiven but they don't believe we're free because they see us and they see that we're still filled with this comparison game we're looking at Barnabas all the time maybe we're trying to pretend to be Barnabas we want credit for being something we're not you know not you but the people at 9 o'clock service they did this stuff these people are bad people. The good people come at 1030, but. So he says, this is the enemy. You lied to the Holy Spirit and you kept some of the money for yourself. It's not about the money. We don't, he, he may have given 90%. It's not about the money. The property is all, is all of it God's, by the way. Of course, everybody say, of course. Because we couldn't work if it wasn't for God. But I want, you to, I want you to notice that he says, this was your money. You didn't have to give it at all. You didn't have to sell the property. So Paul's not saying it's God's money, you got to give it to him. Because it ain't about the money. It was about, you know, being an imposter. It was your, your property to sell or not sell. And after selling it, the money was yours to give or not give. That's not the question. The question is, how, how could you do this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. And it says, as soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. This is not a church growth strategy. <laughs> it's already hard enough to get people to come to church. If everybody who doesn't tithe drops dead after the offering, it would make a significant point, but nevertheless hurt attendance. <laughs> and it goes on to say, the same thing happened with his wife, because they were in cahoots together. But I'm going to dive out of that scripture, Brittany, and I'm just going to walk you through a little sequence here that... I've observed of 35 years of being a pastor. But more importantly, having been a Jesus person for the last 40 years. Okay? When, when we live, we, we kind of go through a process. And it starts out, I'll use the word impossible. These notions over here the, that that there's a God who created the world and he created you and he designed you with a purpose and that he sent his son because he knew you were a sinner and his son died on a cross and came alive again and ascended into heaven and now his spirit lives in you. When people hear that, they say, impossible. Impossible. That's not possible. I'm going to do it my way. And everybody at some level starts with this. Is that true? Could it be true? Wow, oh, wow. I just can't. How could that be? How, you, how could you make this thing? And you, so you don't even like deal with it for a while. And you just kind of live your own life because you just consider all of it so fantastic that you just can't, you know, get there. But then one day you wake up 
and you find out, I have blown it. I have made a terrible mistake. And, and, you, and you find yourself a sinner and you say, I know it sounds impossible, but what if it were true? And you say yes to Jesus and you find out it's not impossible, it, it's possible. And it's the most important thing I've ever done. Because he comes in and he forgives you of this, 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 this. Anybody in here forgiven? Say amen. amen. It's like it went from totally impossible to the most important thing. Everybody say important. Yeah, important. I, that is a big jump. But it doesn't mean just because it's important doesn't mean you know how to be a saint. The Bible calls it sanctification where the Holy Spirit... The minute you accept Jesus and it becomes, you realize this is the most important thing. More important than my job, more important than anything, because this is eternal. When you realize that, that's when you begin. That's not the end. It's the beginning of letting the Holy Spirit come in and renew your mind, your thinking, because this is where we're prisoner. Yeah? In here. God's forgiven what you did, but you still think about it, still worry about it. And what if, what if it's not? What? So it's the most important thing, but it's progressive getting free. Yes. I saw in a business thing one time years ago, they explained how, how people pro progress from not being good at something to being good at something. And it works for your faith too. Like today, did you see uh, Luke? I mean, you didn't even think about it because he's so good at it. But he, he doesn't even think about it. He's just like up here, Luke, guitar, just like talk. He's not looking at any notes. No, no, he's not reading music. He's just up here and his hands are just, his mouth is saying one thing, his hands are doing another. He's like, wow, all that stuff. Do you see it? <laughs> I dramatize. <laughs> and he gets a Bible out and he's kind of doing this, playing, reading, hand, it's handing it off, walking around, you know, kind of managing the band and all that. <laughs> this is how it started. If I said, can you play the guitar like Luke, you would go, oh, I never thought about it. But it, this, is a, this is a classic way of explaining it. In, in regard to the guitar, you are incompetent. Meaning you stink at playing the guitar. And you don't even know how bad you stink. You're unconscious because you've never tried it. And this is why people get married. When you get married, you're in this stage. That's why like when somebody who's 19 or whatever, and they've been out of high school for six months and they decide to get married and they go, we're going to do this and our family's going to be awesome. And we're going to totally reverse. And you just go, <laughs> that's Knock him dead, kiddo. You know what I mean? Because, because uh, everybody starts here. You don't know what you're getting into, otherwise you wouldn't get into it. You wouldn't have kids. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Then, once you start, you move to this, you get married, you have kids, you pick up the guitar, you realize, oh my gosh, I don't know how to be a husband. I don't know how to be a father. This is huge. I'm making some of the same mistakes. But now I'm conscious of it. Now I'm con this is This is like, wow. This is part of what drives you in the spiritual realm to finding Jesus. You start living, you know, this life thing should be easy. I'll be making 200 grand, find a beautiful person, live happily ever after, and then you start doing it. You're like, wow, I'm no good at life. And now I know it. I'm a sinner. This is called I'm a sinner. What do I do about it? And then, you, you, or in Luke's case, you just keep playing. Keep taking lessons. And this incompetent but conscious is where I've taken a few guitar lessons. I bailed out in stage two, by the way. Because <laughs> you're like, D, hold on. It's like, where do I put my hands? You got to keep going through this thing. Most of us were too prideful, so we just bail out at this level. If you keep going, you get to this next stage. 
that's where you start to get good. But you got to think about it. You start going to counseling, you know. You start reading books about marriage. You start reading books about kids. You talk to somebody. You start going to church. This is where people find Jesus. If they ever do, they find him when they realize, I'm terrible at this life. I'm a sinner, and I know it. I need help. And then you get forgiven here, which is basically new start. And you start doing the things that people do. Nobody's forcing you, but you're just like, I got to read what Jesus said. His word's precious to me. I got to start trying to live it out. Somebody say amen. I'm going to start praying because prayer changes things. I got to start getting with some positive people. I got to start attending, not just Christmas and Easter. We call them C and E's. You know what I mean? <laughs> Christmas and Easter, C and E's. That reminds me, we've got like four weeks till all the C's show up. <laughs> On Christmas Eve. <laughs> but you get past the C and E stage and you're like, man, I want to I wanna be a godly man. I want to be a godly woman. And I'm going to start working on my freedom and not just my forgiveness. The Holy Spirit can set you free from your lust and your sin and your Anger, you know? And you get, if you keep going, you get to be where Luke was today, where he's like, talking, reading, not even, <laughs> in the middle of it, you don't even know, he just like adds a song right in the middle of it. <laughs> I saw the order of service, I'm like, oh, I didn't see that in there. He says, whatever. It, ha it matters because this is what was going on when Ananias and Sapphira look at Barnabas. And Barnabas is just like, why? Because his faith had been built. He had seen things they hadn't seen. Had received things they hadn't received. So he was free in a way they were not free. And they had a decision because they went from impossible to important and now the crossroads comes am I going to do this Jesus thing imperfectly or am I going to do it as an imposter because I think if they had come to Peter and said you know what when Barnabas gave imagine this conversation by the way when Barnabas if, if somebody came to Pastor Dean and said when Barnabas gave 100% of that farm, it did something in me. And I don't have the faith right now, Dean, to give 100%, but we have a piece of property and we're going to give 25% of it. We need the rest for taxes. And we're believing that someday in our life, somebody say amen. Someday God can do through us. We'd have a strong enough faith and strong enough finances that we could do a Barnabas. But right now, Dean, we can only give 25%. But can you agree with us that this 25% will help? What do you think Peter would have done? I know what I would have done. I would have said hallelujah. One time I was reading a magazine. This is probably, I don't know, 15 years ago. I haven't read a magazine since. It's a joke. <laughs> Starting the story. I was reading the magazine. <laughs> tough crowd. Tough, tough. <laughs> I was reading a magazine, and there was a story about this guy. He's a prominent guy. And I knew his mother. And his mother was a great human. I had done her funeral, and I was reading this story about it, this guy. I thought, man. And what an impressive guy cool guy, successful guy. And this national magazine is doing an article about him. Anyway, about a month later, he calls my office. And he says, hey, can I come see you? And I said, yeah, come by, see me. He came to see me. We talked for an hour and a half. Didn't quite figure out what he came for. But he said, I'd like to come back and see you again. I said, yeah, come back and see you again. I was watching TV that week, saw him on TV. Like, man, he's doing so great. 
came to see me a couple weeks later and I could tell this time he came to see me he had even he just he had something he wanted to get out and he said pastor and then he told me a story about something that happened in Las Vegas by the way apparently what happens in Las Vegas does not stay in Las Vegas <laughs> despite the marketing <laughs> And tears. And I said, what's the hardest part, man? He said, the hardest part is I'm not who I'm pretending to be. I, I think everybody knows that vibe, you know. Well, I grabbed that guy by the shoulders and I said, bro, that's one decision away it's one decision where you just have to say Holy Spirit I would rather serve you imperfectly than serve you as an imposter and that's why we say so frequently that everybody who attends this church is a sinner that's why when somebody came up to me last week and said, Pastor, it's just really great, great church. I love the vibe here. I've been clean and sober for three days. I don't say to him, three days. Oh, oh that's some, come on. What do we say? Three days. Awesome. Because the reality is he could pretend to not have a problem. Or he could say, God, my faith is as strong as three days. And do you think God's going to honor three days? Amen. Yeah. God honors three days. There's, you say, what happens if you don't? Well, you drop dead. Inside. Some part of us dies when we grieve the Holy Spirit because God doesn't want the fake you. He doesn't want you compared to Barnabas. He wants the real you, imperfect. Shame can die right now. You don't have to live with shame and guilt. You're forgiven. But better than forgiven, he's, he's helping you build your faith. Give to him what you can give to him today. You say like, right, I want to be like this great man of God or I want to be like this great woman of God. It's okay, you're on your way, yes? The Holy Spirit's working in you, yes? And you can't look at me and go, I want, I want what he has. Man, I've seen things. The Lord's building me. He's still building me, yes? So I can believe for things. Some of you are like, you're not there yet. But believe with what you can get. Say, I'm going to give 10%. God, can you take that? It's not money. It's faith. I'm going to give you my three days of sobriety. God, can you make those three days six? Can God make three days six? Yeah. God, I'm going to give you a bad marriage until I can give you a good one. I'm going to give you imperfect Bible reading until I can give you consistent Bible reading. I'm going to give you doubtful prayers because doubtful prayers are better than no prayers. Yes? yes? I'm going to give you prayers with my doubts until I can give you prayers full of faith. Can I pray for you? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Brain's going to come in a second. Close and receive that green light offering. But if you're here and the devil's just been beating you up, I got a great text last night after that last, at the service last night. Somebody just saying to me how much it meant to him. Man, I want you to be free, not just forgiven. There are lots of places where you can go where everybody's pretending to be perfect. We want you not to be pretending. We want you to become free free freedom freedom if you need that freedom right now you just raise your hand all over this place let's just agree together the holy spirit can do it in you he did it in barnabas he did it in me he can do it in you be free 
You want to get rid of that guilt and shame? Just hold that hand up. God, let it be so. Guilt, shame, fade away. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Holy Spirit, give your people freedom. Freedom from sickness and disease, from anxiety, from performance, from the pleasing man. Set them free from trying to please other people. Set them free from the applause of, of other humans. Set them free from other people's expectations. And may they start to gauge their life according to what you want to do in them. I pray it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen, amen. Come on, can you put your hands together this morning? Man, what a great message.